Hi, I'm Holly, and welcome to the first ever face-to-face -face show of Tiddlywinks and Hijinks. This is going to be an interesting show um, for multiple reasons, because it's the first ever face-to-face -face show, and it's the first face-to-face -face review show, and it's also um, right after the double storm that pretty much shut down the South. Um, and I am going to touch up on that briefly. We live in the South, even though I do not have an accent. We were lucky. We only lost power for a couple of hours, but a lot of people around us did lose power for days on end, including in our own town. Um, over four million people in our state, um, so it's obvious <laughs> that we're in Texas, uh, lost power. So again, we were very lucky, and with having five kids, especially five special, well, not five special needs kids, but special needs kids in the mix, um, we have a lot of food, and emergency food in the house. It wasn't, you know, the greatest meals, or the healthiest meals, day after day, especially with not having water to cook with we were able to eat and there were a lot of people who were not able to eat because without power grocery stores were having to dump their food shelves were clearing out i mean it was surreal because i went into the neighboring town um, to get some supplies because our town is out and all the stores all, all the restaurants were closed down because they had to get rid of all their supplies, all their stocks, because it all ruined. Because there was no power. And we haven't gotten shipments in yet to replace all of it. So, it, I mean, it's kind of unfathomable whenever, you know, the storm's gone, but people are still suffering from this. There's people are still without water. Yes, the power is coming back on. The grids are not being overtaxed. We have that going on, but pipes, it takes a while for those to get repaired. Plumbers are just being overworked right now. It's a dangerous job. I don't know if you guys realize how dangerous plumbing is. You can actually catch communicable diseases from doing plumbing. It's still a scary job uh, and we really need to give those guys a big thank you along with the linemen and the drivers and everybody else. Um, so kudos to all of them. There are still a lot of charities that are going on so if you're not living in Texas or even if you are and you were not affected I'm going to post a link uh, down below and also in the blog. The charity that I'll be posting is actually, right now I do believe they are splitting whatever you donate evenly between several, I think it's like seven to ten different food banks um, throughout Texas. Um, because like I said, people are still starving. The first game that I'm going to be reviewing face to face is Machi Goro. Machi Koro is a game that is from Japan. It's considered a card game. Uh, the premise of it is that you have been elected mayor. Congrats! People, your constituents are, well, they're demanding. And they are not happy with the way the town is being run and they want more. They don't like it being small. And what you start out with is uh, basically a bakery and a wheat field. They want things like radio towers, amusement parks, <laughs> cheese factories maybe, you know. They want shopping malls. Come on, build it up. <laughs> so it sounds kind of difficult, but it's actually pretty fun. The Machi Koro base game requires you to set out each of the supply cards, which includes establishments and major establishments um, to make your marketplace. Now, if you have a small table, this really doesn't work. Um, as you can see, our marketplace is quite large. 
Uh, we do have the base game and we have one expansion which is Millionaire's Row. Uh, so we are actually going to be using the Millionaire's Row setup which is where they have you shuffle the entire supply card section and you draw 10 of them and only set 10 of them, uh, 10 random ones face up. Okay, I just rolled a five. So the way the turn works is you roll the dice, you earn income, and then you can build your town. So it's construction phase. So since I rolled a five, and over here, just get her cards. Um, over here, she has a forest. If uh, anybody rolls a five, she gets one coin from the bank on anyone's turn. So thankfully, I don't have to pay her. The bank pays her. I got my coin back. <laughs> <laughs> so I do not have anything with a five on it on the top. I can now buy a card. And we look on the bottom of the cards and look at the prices. And I have a whole whopping three coins. The good thing is, is you hold nothing in your hands other than the die when you roll it. Everything sits on the table. So if you have somebody in your family who has motor issues, but cognitively they are all there, this is a great game. They can dictate and tell somebody what to do. There you go, game's ready to go. Um, if you have someone who's struggling cognitively, this game is not a good game. This game does require math, so it is a great game to help with math. There's addition, there can be some multiplication depending if you stack, like if you buy more than one of the same property, then it multiplies. Um, there's some stealing money aspects. The worst part is, and I say worst, is that the more property you have, you have to keep up with it. Because there's a lot of different aspects. A lot of different things. But um, I like to keep it color coded. For example, the blue property means that you get money no matter who rolls the dice. So I keep those separate and whenever anybody rolls, I look at that stuff. The red properties mean that I steal money from somebody else when anybody else rolls the dice. So I put that also close to the blue property. And the green property I keep separate because that's only whenever I roll purple property is separate and that's also only whenever I roll. As long as you keep everything separate, it's pretty, you know, 